the Malaysian GGK. Let's pick up where we left off of part one. Let's go. The GGK normally operate on foot, covering huge distances. But getting behind the enemy lines sometimes requires another skill. Oh, here we go again, behind enemy lines. If you're in front of enemy lines, I guess you're okay. These guys, never ending with the dumb comments. Kalau kita melalui jalan darat, mungkin banyak risiko yang kita harus mungkin dengan bobby trap, dengan jerangkat sama, dengan dengan berbagai halangan. Dan masa yang diambil adalah lambat. Mungkin 2-3 jam kita nak tujuan. Dan kita akan digugurkan kalau melalui static jam, mungkin dalam uh, 55 saat ke 1 minit, kita dah sampai ke sasaran daripada buka payung. But these recruits have to learn to walk before they can fly. It's day one of the longest march of their lives. All right, now look at that guy. He's convulsing, clearly a heat stroke. If you've ever been to Malaysia, I have not. I've been to the area, humid, hot. Doesn't look like they're giving them a lot of water. And some people just fall apart in the heat. They just don't genetically have it in them. You guys ever seen that? Let me know. The terrain is uneven and the weather extremely hot. 50 kilometers on day one, and nine recruits have already dropped out. But the melampaui dia akal manusia biasa. Saya daripada Kuala Lumpur KL. KL lahir KL, besar KL. Buat semua orang pandang orang KL ni lemah, leput, sangat lemah. Tapi saya nak buat orang KL boleh. Orang KL boleh berjaya sebagai seorang komando. They are losing more fluids than they can possibly replace. Dehydration is a real threat. Instructors keep a close eye out for telling signs. Its first symptoms are muscle cramps and dizziness, which can rapidly lead to a full body shutdown. Never seen that stick technique employed. I have passed out from a heat stroke or heat something. I was marching. We stopped. We were supposed to take our socks off, all that crap. And all of a sudden, I went, dink, fell right down on my face. I got revived with water from a canteen in my face. So it does suck. That was the only time it's ever happened. I've had heat exhaustion, you know, where things come in and out, the cramping. Sebab dah sekarang ni keadaan panas. Panas tinggi. Dia hilang dia punya kawalan otak dia dah hilang. Jadi dia akan gigit lidah. The recruits are carrying 17 kilogram packs. It's up to them to decide when to snack and replace vital fluids. Go, go. Lojok, lojok. Apa kira? But the instructors set the pace. Go, go! Wagan Mangaro! Go, go! Hey, Ruska! Looking back to one of my first videos in the comment section, they said, We don't want to yell at our recruits or our trainees. We want thinking guys. I guess the Malaysians did not get that memo. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments or put that in the comments. You should. They are trying to keep the pack together to avoid any stragglers who may be tempted to hitch a ride. I'll be hitching a ride. It's 15 hours in, and for some, the end of the road. Go! <laughs> But not everyone is struggling. I'm guessing that Dan Balzarian would not make this like he made the SEAL training. That guy just got pushed down his face. He just gave up, threw his hands up in the air like this turd's not going to make it. Saya suka, suka jalan laju. Saya suka sangat. Mula-mula saya jalan pun saya tak boleh. Tapi kaki saya sakit lah. Tapi saya post yang menyambat dan saya lepas tu panas semua. Saya suka okay lah. Tinggal paham pun sempat. My body is okay. Uh, there's no much pain. Uh, here and there, so my leg is still okay. So far, it's so good. I can still walking. Can still smiling. 
At this stage, teamwork and leadership will be judged. Recruit 2 needs his section to keep up. I need them to be motivated in everything they do. They just need to run for five seconds. So dash for five seconds and then we take rest. Soldier is about teamwork. So how big or small we are, we need to be. Now, can you imagine if their boots were bloused, right? So they got them loose, which makes a lot of sense. Get some ventilation. But if their boots were bloused, you'd just be like a hot pocket coming out of the oven. Together. GGK commandos need to push themselves beyond the normal physical pain barrier. It takes extreme mental strength to keep the body moving. But in combat, that could save lives. 90 kilometers in. Captain Obvious. As high noon hits, some can't take the pain anymore. Despite Recruit 2's best efforts, one of his buddies is in serious trouble. Disorientation and confusion are signs of advanced dehydration. His friends want him to finish, but his condition is getting worse. Little jokers are hard as nails. I'm just trying to picture this in U.S. training in 2020. I can't see it. I think it's only going to get worse. The Malaysians need to get on board of the Snowflake Patrol and get the PC memo from the Mothers of America. Otherwise, they're going to get in big trouble. They urgently need to rehydrate him. If he doesn't get saline solution in the next few minutes, he could go into shock and die. 135 of Malaysia's toughest men are in the middle of a three-month selection course to become part of Malaysia's elite special forces unit, the GGK Commandos. They are in phase two, a 160-kilometer forced march lasting three days. A recruit has become severely dehydrated. If he doesn't get saline solution fast, his body could shut down. Take aside the shutting down part, which it's already doing there. It's the brain damage when you fry your brain. And once you get heat exhaustion, I think it is, or heat stroke, can't remember. You're more susceptible to it after the fact. And I know in the Marine Corps, they used to kick guys out if their anal probe showed they were more than, say, 103 or some number. You docs put it in the comment section. I just remember it being a big deal. Uh, for what? For what? Hey. He wakes but needs urgent medical attention. He'll survive, but for him and 14 others hospitalized today, it's the end of the line. And in this training, if you drop out for heat exhaustion, for medical, right? Let's say it's legit. You're not being a whiner. You're not coming back. That's the deal here. You don't make it because your body can't make it. And they say your body can't make it if you broke your leg, right? You're just not cut out for it. They're not wasting a spot. I think that's a good idea. Pretty harsh idea, but I think it's a good one. Just a day, yeah. One hundred twenty kilometers into the march, and the survivors finally reach a rest stop. No one has voluntarily quit yet, but with sixty kilometers left to go, it's early days. Well, tomorrow will be much harder. It's my last instructor said that for the first 
30 or 40 kilo, uh, you will use your strength, okay? your feet, your physical, and the rest, you just use your mental uh, to keep going. Yang dia orang fikir sekarang ni dia mau nak pakai greenberry Itu saja dia patut fikir Sebab itu dia punya matlamat dia datang untuk I'm no expert here, but I'm not sure why they're not taking their boots off Their feet have got to be completely, utterly soaked Now they're going to start getting jungle rot, foot rot, cellulitis, all the above Maybe not day one, but they've already got nasty blisters for sure Maybe they don't have extra socks, I don't know, let's see what they do Diri khusus ni Kalau dia nak fikir dia penat, dia akan gagal. Tomorrow, they are going to have to do it all over again. Face dehydration, hunger, pain, and the worst enemy of all, self-doubt. GGK commandos are sent to places where self-doubt isn't something they can afford. 1993. Somalia's capital Mogadishu is plagued by poverty and civil war. Two U.S. Black Hawk helicopters were shot down and Malaysian special forces were called in to help with the rescue operation. Under constant attack from rebels, it took two full days to get the trapped soldiers out. Now someone recently put that in the comment section. I thought they were full of shit. Here we go. So... I have no I, no doubt these guys are outstanding, and I'd be none happier to see the GGK commandos kick a door in and put one right in someone's eyeball if I were being stuck in the hostage situation. <laughs> one GGK commando was killed and several wounded. Real missions can rage for days on end without clear outcomes. But commandos must have complete confidence in their abilities to grapple with the unknown. 5 a.m., day three, and the recruits have begun the final day of their 160-kilometer forced march. It will take all their willpower to push to the end. Kemampuan fizikal tu tak penting kan? Yang penting kemampuan mental. Halangan pada diri sendiri tu merupakan Musuh, musuh kita tu, diri sendiri. With 10 kilometers to go, some have dug deep inside to find the energy to make a run to the finish line. Dulu saya nak nombor satu lah. Itu yang saya sebab, saya seorang saya, budak India. Saya buat latihan lah. Bukan untuk latihan saja. Bukan untuk training saja. Mau perang. And people talk about the cultural divide in the U.S., Get a country like Malaysia, and you guys can do the homework on it. There's a variety of different religions, cultures, tribal differences amongst the people who live there. It's pretty normal. It's a lot smaller in the U.S., so wake up, America. <laughs> 160 kilometers in three days. Recruit 143 has completed its personal mission. He is the first to cross the green clearing that marks the end of the forced march. The second group, hot on his heels. Sangat teruja kan, sebab macam luar jangkaan. Macam tak percaya kepada kemampuan kita kan. Bila kita melaluinya, kita akan dapat bayangkan macam mana yang orang kata kan, kan sangat dahsyat komando ni kan, amat digurni, kita kuti kan. One hundred eighteen recruits have made it to stage three, and it's about to get tougher. Their next mission: get dropped deep into the harshest place imaginable, and survive for two weeks without food or water. All right, I'm gonna stop it right there. Growing up in Florida, we played war in the mangrove swamps many a weekend, and it was terrible. <laughs> And we bring food. We try not to get sopping wet perpetually. The no seams, the bugs, just the biting bugs alone are miserable. And the humidity never goes away. So I can appreciate this to a little tiny bit. When commandos need to hide, they go where their enemies will not follow them. The GGK have mastered the art of jungle warfare after successfully beating a communist insurgency in the 1960s. 
Now I'm going to say that M16, I think it's probably an A2, will not fire with all that mud on it. I think that looks good for this video. I cannot imagine it firing at least more than a few times without a jam, a stovepipe, or something. What do you guys think? Maybe they've got a way to do it, but ours, if they got dirty, sayonara. Rebel strongholds were deep inside Malaysia's jungles. The GGK not only had to find and fight them, but learn to survive in this most hostile of environments. Commandos would often be sent into the jungle with one month's supply of food for operations that could last three months. Exhaustion, tropical disease, and wild animals claimed the lives of some men, but the experience gained made them ultimate jungle fighters. The GGK chose the most extreme environment to train their commandos in survival. Malaysia's remote swamplands are as uninhabitable as it gets. They have not. Now, I wonder how many of these guys, these recruits, are gamers, streamers, YouTubers. I wonder, because they look like that type of crew, don't they? <laughs> Nothing but a machete and three simple tasks to find food and water and to build a shelter. But in this environment, nothing is easy. They face extreme heat, heavy rainfall, mud, snakes, and crocodiles. And just to make things worse, mosquitoes and sandflies are everywhere. An early survival tip from the instructors makes the start slightly more bearable. <laughs> Now, for the record, I have done that, and it does work. If you can get the right kind of mud that sticks on you, because you have to keep reapplying it, need your buddy to put on your back, it's going to keep them down by a percentage. It's better than nothing, for sure. This exercise simulates escaping from capture and surviving a period of evading enemy patrols. Kita pilih tempat yang begini, tempat payah begini sebab tujuan pertama dia musuh susah nak kesan, dia susah nak bergerak masuk. Ini kita kawasan payah ni kita buat untuk dia nak menyesuaikan diri dengan keadaan tempat ni lah. The mud sucks away whatever energy these recruits have left. I've never been in this state before. <laughs> oh, I miss my sister's cooking. Yeah, we still got months to go. I would say you saw that young man with those boots not laced tight. He will lose a boot in that mud for sure. It'll suck you in like quicksand. Recruits are allowed to eat anything they can catch but they must share it. Kami kejar dengan kawan-kawan. Rasa seronok sangat dapat biawak ni. Mesti nak makan ni. Binatang ini walaupun saya keadaan darurat, saya mesti dapat boleh makan lah. Untuk nambahkan tenaga. You cannot choose favorites here. <laughs> Now, I can't address a lot of religions, but I do understand in several, if it's under extreme circumstances, that you're allowed to eat something on the no-no list. You guys that are familiar with that, let me know, but I understand that from, I won't mention the religions, that you can eat it in the event you might die. You just eat things. Yeah, survive. They use the tongkok menandakan dia telah berjaya menangkap jadi dia akan jadi bangga jadi benda ni dia akan menjadi menarik minat kumpulan-kumpulan yang lain akan berusaha lebih lagi untuk nak survivalkan diri dia untuk nak hidup the water in the swamp is brackish and unbearable to drink so Malaysia's torrential rainstorms are both a source of suffering and salvation dengan keadaan yang sejuk Bila menjelang malam dia akan bertambah lagi sejuk. Jadi ini pertama kali masak kera. Jadi kera punya kepala dia sambungkan. Jadi 
I can tell you, you don't realize how hard it is to catch water until you have to without some kind of device, right? Like a bowl, a canteen cup, or something. It's a lot harder than you think. It looks easy on the movies where they catch it in a leaf and they're drinking this water. But usually by the time you get it, you're so thirsty that you end up getting something you shouldn't have. You know, oh, that water's okay. It's in this little ditch area. Next thing you know, you got the runs. Montezuma's revenge for the rest of your time out. What I can do here is <laughs> kerani di belah di pusing perut lepas tu di salai tu je yang boleh buat rendam air masin salai dia ada semacam hmm. masin sikit salai sampai kering saya kerja awam dulu Yum. berat saya sebanyak 79 dan sekarang ni saya rasa mungkin berat saya menjadi 69 in their weak states it's hard for the recruits to catch enough food so as a backup they are given survival tip number 2 Si Pup boleh tuk ni, dia boleh mendatangkan tenaga segera. Kalau dia makan dalam seekor, dua ekor, dia boleh pulihkan balik tenaga dia. Tapi dalam jangka masa pendek, dia boleh bertahan hanya untuk sekerak hari lah. Dalam lima, enam jam, macam tu. I've eaten those type of snails. They actually are good. But what he's saying there, the amount of energy is limited because there's very little fat on those things. If you're not getting energy from protein, it's got to be fat. Or sugar somehow, right? Carbohydrates. So you can eat it. I'm not sure where they're going to get fat from unless they eat the brains or the organs of some animal. Maybe that's what they're doing to get fat because that's the biggest key is getting some source of energy. But they're only allowed to eat three snails a day, forcing them into the worst possible state. Those who wow. break this rule will face the consequences. Snails are the easiest food to catch here giving them the energy boost they desperately need. Learning to cope with situations this bad will help save their lives in real conflict. Jadi ini adalah siput yang dia orang cari untuk makanan dia orang dalam keadaan lapar. Dia ketuk menggunakan parang bagi pecah dengan cengkerang dia ni. Lepas tu dia akan koyak, dia akan tarik dia punya ni. Sebab kita mesti kena potongkan bagian ekor dia ni. Sebab baru dia boleh, sebab dia ada musi ni, isi dah. Let me be honest with you. I did eat those snails, but I did cook them in butter after I boiled them. So I had the French version of escargot in Florida. The isolation is a good time for thought. Sebab dalam latihan komando ni tu keluarga memang tak bagi ya takut risiko. Tapi saya, saya datang sini secara sembunyi ya tak bagi tahu dia bahawa saya nak masuk komando. Setelah saya sampai ke Melaka selama dua minggu baru saya kontak bagi tahu dia yang saya dah ada ke Melaka. So dia tak boleh buat apa sebab saya duduk kat Melaka lah. Dia tak dapat nak halang lah. Tak dapat nak suruh saya balik. Sebab utama saya masuk komando memang saya minat. Minat nak komando. At 2 a.m., a group has been caught eating extra snails. Not sharing this. All right, what do you think the punishment is for eating extra snails, right? No snails for two days. A cane pole beating. Put that in the comments, what you think, and then press click play. This bounty is against the rules. Recruit 2 was the leader of the pack. Uh -oh. His whole team will be punished. They will wash the mud from their bodies and be tied to a wooden platform exposed to the elements. Dia akan merasa kesusahan dia pasal perit digigit oleh nyamuk agas dia tak boleh oh. tak boleh nak bergerak dia tak boleh nak. Now that's some apocalypse now Colonel Kurt shit right there. That's got to be miserable. Now can you imagine trying that in an allied force training? You know maybe they have that, but they're showing this on general television in Malaysia. So you can imagine what they do. This is selection. So how's the training? What do you guys think? Tampak tampak tak boleh jadi dia akan mungkin dia akan insaf lah. 
It looks sadistic, yeah. but the message will stick with them forever. Sebab komando ni dia akan bekerja dalam kumpulan kecil. Mungkin lima orang, mungkin sepuluh orang. Jadi dia tak ramai macam ni. Jadi bila dia tak boleh nak bekerjasama dengan kumpulan dia, jadi gagal lah. Dia seorang boleh bekerja, bagaimana dia tak boleh juga nak melaksanakan tugas tanpa kawan-kawan dia. This swamp will claim the weak, and it will take everything they have to continue. The chances of making the grade have just taken a very bad turn. The group was tied up the entire night. They've survived it, but the next day brings new challenges. The threat of flooding has forced them to move their shelters to higher ground. Recruit 2 needs to push his team into building a treehouse that can withstand the harshest conditions. These guys can't catch a break. Eat more than three snails, you're busted. There's a flood coming or high tide. You got to find a new house. I don't know of any other SF training or selection that goes through this sequence of events. You guys do. Let me know. Put it in the comments. I'd love to watch it. But his own energy levels are at their lowest point in the selection course. So it's level can be up, up, up to here. So we need to build above the water level. So at the center of the report, why? To support at the center. After we finish this base, it will be starting to break the roof. Yes. Come on, flash. In a real situation, it's not just about survival. These men need to be alert and avoid capture. Discipline needs to continue even here. Those who don't keep to these rules are punished. Kesalahan mereka kerana tidak menjalankan tugas dengan betul. Wow. Now this is legit Colonel Kurt shit. Apocalypse now. If you remember the movie when he sticks the guy in the cage... Looks identical to it. Let's keep going. Kita mahu satu kilo. Dia punya makanan, tapi dia buat balik dalam lima iku ataupun naik iku. Mana kesalahan dia tu besar. Masalah dia dimasukkan ke dalam penjara. The recruits have no idea how long this torture will continue. Komando aja, ya dapat. Tak macam ni. Kalau kau kaya lain, tak dapat. Oh, dapat macam ni. The recruits are released just before the high tide reaches its peak. Yeah, I think that's actually a break from the pole tie-up operation. At least they're away from the bugs now. That water, let's just say it's 80 degrees, it's still going to suck the heat out of your body. You're going to get cold, especially when you have no energy in your body to help shiver or anything else. You're just going to start getting cold as hell, even though the water probably is warm to the touch. But if you're 96.8 or whatever it is, and that water is a lesser temperature, it's going to suck the heat out of you, and you're going to get cold fast. The swamp phase is finally over. Recruits are headed back to base camp in Malacca, where they will face the moment of truth. Who made it to the final stage of the course and who didn't? Jadi, kepada anggota yang telah di panggil nanti keluar ke bahagian hadapan, di hadapan ini termasuk 02. Good. After a month of pushing their minds and bodies to the limit, it's game over for 15 recruits. Recruit 2 was caught disobeying orders and cheating. Instructors were forced to throw him out of the course. I can't do
We Kwondo says Star Wars kalau tak tertangkap tak salah. Well that'd be terrible. You make it this far, you throw all that crap. Maybe you're cheating three weeks ago. They let you go suffer through and they're like, hey, by the way, we caught you cheating. Goodbye. Kalau tangkap pun salah. This mean you're not guilty if you not get caught. Yeah, of course, he got caught. <laughs> so I've been caught. That's been I'm guilty. GGK soldiers are world renowned for their jungle warfare skills, a legacy from their beginnings in the 1960s. But modern warfare has changed. Today's GGK commandos have to respond to new global threats that bring them into an urban environment. Before that, more toward the counterintelligence agency. Now it's more toward the urban operation, or you can call it conventional warfare. I can't imagine a more effective or prepared jungle warfare group, at least from this selection we saw here. These guys are going through it. They're living in it. They're probably from a comparable environment. And they would just be the ones I would want in the jungle working with me. What do you guys think? Anybody else you can compare them to with respect to jungle warfare? The rise of terrorism post 9-11 has required a change in tactics. Secara tidak sedarnya, seorang anggota gerahas ni kita hantar kusuk-kusuk, dia sudah ada gerila warfare itu punya konsep tu ada pada diri dia. Cuma dia perlu sudkan tamanan keadaan-keadaan dia. Kalau kita cakap tentang gerila warfare, gerila warfare ni dia mana-mana dulu dia pergi. The recruits that make it through the selection course will go on to specialize in airborne, land or amphibious operations. They'll train in the new facilities built to equip Malaysia's commandos for the 21st century. Macam mana nak masuk bilik, macam mana apabila dia jumpa seleko, dia nak mengambil seleko, macam mana dia tidak mau bertembak dengan kawan dia, macam mana kita ada kontrol, kita ada... And we may use SWAT, FBI, you know, fill in the blank to help with hostage situations. I've noticed a lot of these other countries are using their military. South African Special Task Force, these guys they mentioned it, and several others we've watched. What do you guys think about the military with respect to domestic items, which we don't do here in the States? We saw that with the SAS and the embassy. Maybe we use some of our SF guys, just don't hear about it as much. Let me know in the comment section. The control center, communication with control. Hostage rescue requires another specialization. Snipers stationed in the outside perimeter. So, salah satu tim pengempur masuk di kawasan Stronghold. Sniper untuk memberi perlindungan kepada tim pengempur dan membunuh dia punya teroris yang berada di kawasan uh, koridor ataupun di kawasan sentry musuh. A team is made up of four commandos. One to guide the hostage, and the others to cover them as they make their escape. One thing I've learned from watching these video game plays that guys have sent me, there is zero rear security in those games. Even on seeing the description below about the Korean SEAL who played a video game, no one ever provides rear security, and you see that here, which makes a hell of a lot of sense. That's the point of having four guys. At least you've got 360-degree perimeter trying to get this hostage out of the building. Back at the selection course, the number of recruits vying for a spot on Malaysia's elite commando force has dropped from 180 to 103. Those who remain have reached the final test, known by the commandos as escape and evasion. It's a culmination of everything they have learned in the course. Their mission, to destroy a heavily guarded communication tower and escape from the enemy back to friendly camp 180 kilometers away. Wow. The enemy are experienced GGK commandos. If they catch the recruits, they will be ruthless. That's a hell of a long way to have to, you know, blow up the tower, right? Then 180 kilometers back and not get caught. So these guys know which way they're going. There's only so many ways here. 
I don't know how they make it, quite frankly. That's such a long piece. I guess they don't get an X fill with a Blackhawk, right? <laughs> Di sini lah kita nak uji dia. Dia faham ataupun tidak apa yang Jyotis bagi kepada dia. Daripada mula hingga lah pernah. Beri perlindungan. They will trek 10 kilometers through the jungle to reach their target. At 5 a.m. they must enter the area undetected, rig the tower with C4 explosives, destroy it, and escape through the jungle unnoticed. But the enemy are waiting in position. Recruit 14 has been chosen to lead the ambush. This is his moment to shine, as the fate of his entire team rests in his hands. Jadi di sini, Trup Komander main peranan penting sebab kita menutupkan menggunakan live. Saya rasa berbangga dipilih dan saya rasa orang atasan percaya kepada saya nak jadi ketua untuk sebuah ini. Bapak saya betul-betul bangga dengan saya sebab dia now it looks like they're picking leaders based on your leadership ability or skills you show. Not because you got a four-year degree and all of a sudden you're a leader, which makes no sense to me when you get out, say, you're a SEAL, and you get out in a SEAL platoon. You're still going to have an ensign who's in charge of you, albeit you could have four or five years in the Navy, not a SEAL, but have more leadership skills. What do you guys think about that in these SF units? Do officers play a role just because they've got a four-year degree in history, OCS, and maybe the basic school? I don't know. Final preparations before the assault. Every man needs to know his role and the action to take when they hit the enemy. Once they set the explosives, they'll use a code word, goat snails. The signal for recruits to clear the target area and make a beeline to safety. But to get there, they have a long way to go. <laughs> 3 a.m. and the recruits have been trekking six hours to their target. <laughs> It's one of the few training elements I've seen so far in this video that looks pretty typical. You know, a final training exercise, you've got to assault an objective, get back to where you're going to go to get the helicopter, truck, or whatever you're doing. This looks more normal than I've seen, at least with respect to the jungle training. <laughs> Tak jadi seorang, seorang daripada pasukan elit Pasukan elit Angkatan Tentera Malaysia Saya tak berpaya lah nak berat Jangan tangkap dalam musuh lah tu Recruit 14 also has to make sure his troops stay awake They've been on the move for hours And they're running on empty Masuk ke tenaga Untuk serangan malam ni Semua bergantung pada tenaga yang masih ada. Baki-baki tenaga. Tapi dalam keadaan terdesak ni, komando dia akan mengeluarkan tenaga luar jangkaan. Pulling guard when somebody else is catching a half hour, an hour of Zs, especially when it's a night and you're already tired, that can be tough. You really got to make an effort to stay awake. You're trying to be quiet so we can't do jumping jacks, smack himself around, other guys catching some Zs. That's a real challenge, and these guys are already spent. Under pressure, a commando needs to be able to dig deep to stay on full alert. At 4.45 a.m., the assault team reaches their target. They prepare the attack and the explosives. Okay, apa musuh akan buat? Itu dia dia perhati betul-betul adalah Ambil kedudukan Five AM strike time. I suspect these guys have got figured out land navigation because you see a lot of guys that are absolutely terrible at it. 
And that was even when I was in pre-GPS days. So they haven't talked about land nav. So hopefully the Malaysians have got it figured out. They could provide some instruction to some of our U.S. military. They begin to approach their target. Cuma di situ kita ada dengar sedikit bunyi lah, bunyi ranting dipatahkan, okay? Ranting dipatahkan, hanya sedikit saja bising. team moves in well one team covers them they set up the explosives i can tell you the tricky part in the jungle so you got a lot of noises birds everything else when you get it into an area those things will go quiet right so when you or an enemy knows that so when they hear things go quiet what does that mean is someone else is coming typically so that's really tough these guys to sneak up because the enemy the instructors know when things go quiet Take aside hearing any crackling branches or grass. These guys are coming. Somewhat an unfair advantage because they already know that, but that's reality typically in a jungle like that. A smoke grenade heightens the confusion. <laughs> Flares are a signal for help by the enemy. The recruits make their exit. Secara keseluruhannya, uh, I bagi uh, 80% ke 85% sukses. But it's not over yet. In groups of 10, they race back into the jungle to escape from the enemy. The enemy are real GGK commandos. They will hunt down as many of the recruits as they can. Bagaimana yang siri-siri sebelum ni kan? Memberitahu gambaran musuh memang dahsyat. Kalau ditangkap musuh memang dahsyat. Moments later, a group of recruits have been caught. Now you almost think you blow it up, sit where you're at, right? You start hightailing it back, they expect that. Now they may expect you to sit where you're at. So it's kind of a double-edged sword here. What do you do? They may have to been at a certain time to exfil. So who knows? Let's see what happens once they got caught. And I'm sure it's not good. Could involve a bamboo stick. They are about to be interrogated to find out who their officer is. It's 45 minutes of excruciating pain. A brutal reminder of what they could face in the real world. Sebagai mana yang ada dalam sumpah prajurit komando dan juga sumpah kereta tentera daratan. Their heads are shaved as a mark of capture. They are then released to continue their escape. But I think we just saw the sanitized version of what the POW capture would look like. I suspect they do more than that just because of what I've seen in this video so far. What else do you guys think they did to these POWs they caught? Put that in the comments. But as soon as they enter the jungle, they will be chased again. It may be the toughest test yet, but it will also be their most important lesson. Recruits have been on a three-month journey through hell. Think about it, too. That's just selection. So you make it from there, and then you go on, whether you're going to be airborne, shipborne or I think they say mountain type of a ranger type of operation so you've got several different ways you go in this different specialties you take once you get through selection of the 180 that started 103 have reached the end of the commando selection course out of the videos you've seen what looks like the toughest selection if you like more of these videos check in the cards above or next to me and I'll see you there